we all know Chris I'm working right? on it. I'm working on it. And if you don't, well, <laughs> that's a video for another day. Just subscribe, and I will mentally destroy myself by giving you a rundown of this enigma of a human. Because today we're not talking about Chris, technically. Because today, I will instead be mentally destroying myself by telling you, Div, about her magnum opus, her gift to the Holy. world, the product of her wondrous mind. It has been described as things such as an atomic bomb of a comic, mentally damaging to the reader, as well as having its key flaws identified as literally everything. I feel the need to put this video down as a cognito hazard, because the knowledge I'm about to share with you is sure to cause extreme distress. Honestly, I'm just trying to stall this intro because I've put a mental block on my brain to forget everything about this comic, and I really don't want to go back into the inhuman horrors that are the Sonichu comics. Okay, where to begin? Sonichu is the supposed story of Sonichu the Hedgehog, who is a Pikachu that collided with Super Sonic whilst he battled perfect chaos at the end of Sonic Adventure 1. The energy from this collision transformed him into the one and only Sonichu, somehow. Anyway, the story is about Sonichu and his wide cast of characters, like Rose Chu, his wife, Wild, Punchy, Angelica, Bubbles, Magichan, and Chris Chan himself, just to name a few. Oh, and don't forget Black Sonichu. Who is evil? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> These characters all live in the wild and wacky world of Quickville, full of both anthropomorphic animals, Pokemon, and humans. And no one bats an eye at that. Oh yeah, and there's Transformers. Don't forget the Transformers. Are you doing the Fortnite emo? What about the Chaos Pokeballs? Oh, don't forget the Yu-Gi-Oh trap cards. You never saw this coming. I summoned yeah, Pot of Green to draw three additional cards from my deck. That's what? not what it does. <laughs> Doesn't that do is that. what it does. It doesn't. I that's, what, that's what it do, Yugi! Yeah, this comic is incredibly complicated. Pris was not a very creative person. And I don't think she came up with anything unique except for the whole Sonichu medallion thing. Oh, yeah, this reminds me. When I said this comic book was about Sonichu, uh, yeah, I lied. Did not. It shouldn't actually be called The Adventures of uh, Sonichu. It should be called The Adventures of Chris Chan, because that's basically all this webcomic is. It's the Chris show. This is because after a small introductory period, Chris just takes over the whole story, as it becomes her platform to rant about small inconveniences and her poor life decisions. But if you want me to tell you everything about that, yeah. <laughs> Nice try. Better men than me have tried for years, and they're still not done summing up the history of this specimen. But I'd say out of all the problems this uh, disaster zone has, Chris stealing the limelight is the biggest, and I'll explain why later. But for now, let's move on, shall we? Okay, okay. So the characters in Sonichu are, in my humble yet professional opinion, all written poorly. Wow, shocker. Every single character in this comic is as two-dimensional as possible. For instance, this guy, Punchy Sonichu, right here. Guess what he's about. Guess what he, what his character is. Yeah, you guessed it. He likes fighting people. What about Angelica Rose Chu? She's religious. These characters are so nothing. I had to make the script for this video as fast as possible. Because my brain, by the time I had finished reading, was already forgetting what had happened in this uh, comic. It's just that forgettable. I, I can't tell you a single trait about these characters that cannot be figured out from the names and aesthetics of the characters themselves. Even Sonichu himself suffers from this. His only traits being he has a wife he loves. He loves his father, Christian. That's also his... <laughs> And also his weakness is pickles. There's a lot of health benefits to pickles. Yet another problem with the Sonichu cast is that for absolutely no reason, there are characters that get introduced for like a small contribution to the plot and then are given nothing to do afterwards. You're not supposed to be here. Uh, for example, this guy or this lady. I can't even remember their names because all they exist to do is be a love interest and then thrown away and forgotten about. Another thing I find hilarious <laughs> is that Chris actually made characters based off of people he knew in real life and would frequently implement these characters into his comic. I swear every issue I read there was a new girl he knew in real life that we'd put in there to be his love interest, only to replace with another one not so much later on. Not to mention he'd pit people into his comics he hated so he could, um, <clears throat> unalive them. If I chop you up in a meat grinder and the only thing that comes out and that's left of you is your eyeball, 
you're probably going to... Not you, I'm just saying, like, if you, if somebody were... Mm, yeah, very gruesome, I know. Have you guys ever heard of the Bechdel test? Well, you see, it's a test to see whether or not female characters within a story can have a conversation without mentioning men in any form. Naturally, Sonichu fails this test, as well as also having some very sexist and homophobic comments thrown into the... Hey, hey, get that out of there! Anyway, let's talk about Chris's character, shall we? Now... I have no idea why he felt the need to implement himself into the Sonichu story in the first place, but as the story went on he found himself taking up more and more panels in the Sonichu comics until it was basically the Chris story. This includes things such as having stories back to back with no Sonichu included, the plot being centered around him as the chosen one, you playing Minecraft. Sonichu being relegated to a sidekick, as well as complete and utter Mary Sueism. Yeah you heard me right folks, Chris Chan is a Mary Sue. <laughs> yeah. Every time she was doing something, what little minuscule enjoyment I had reading this comment died. I, I can't do this. I can't do this section anymore. I can't take it. Let's move on. Oh, wait. Bionic the Hedgehog's pretty cool, though. I mean, he plays basketball. Yo, yo, yo! Ah! Now, I know what you're thinking. What possible storyline could take place in the Chu universe? For the most part, it's about Sonic Chu and Powers, Chris Chen included, of course, living in the city of Quickville and fighting the antics of Chris. <laughs> Chris's enemies include Giovanni, a gay version of Chris, uh, a teacher Chris knew from college, an orb that ponders you, someone's boyfriend, uh, a black hedgehog, and a superior comic maker, among other characters. Now, I would be lying to you to say that Sonichu has a good story. In fact, I would be lying to you to say that Sonichu had a story. It doesn't. Instead, it has events that happen Dancing. that either appear out of nowhere or have very little to no sell. It's painful how preschool this comic is. Stuff just happens for no rhyme or reason and you're expected to just take it like a good little boy. I have the distinct memory of reading the eighth issue and about halfway through, I just mentally broke. I was muttering to myself, I can't read this anymore, man. Because my brain had turned into mush. This ain't Yakuza, this, this comic book is mentally damaging. Expect that reaction if you try and read this. I'm convinced everyone who has has had that exact same reaction at some point reading through. Because this comic is just that bad. There's no character arcs, there's no character growth. Chris just decides something has happened, and then boom, that's now how it is, accepted. Black Hedgehog loves Blue Hedgehog? Yeah, sure, whatever, I guess that's true now. Didn't they hate each other because, you know, he's evil? Eh, whatever. If I'm honest, I feel like if Chris's character wasn't in this comic, I could almost, almost give it a pass. Because at least then it would be a cohesive narrative. I mean, don't get me wrong, there would still be stolen ideas all over the place, but I believe it would at least would have been in its own universe. Chris's character robs Sonic Q of all cohesion, as he, by proxy, introduces characters that have no reason existing in that world. Oh yeah, and Chris commits war crimes. <laughs> Let's talk about the artwork. It's bad. Like, there's no other way around it. The art style is primary school level, dude. The first issue was drawn when Chris was 20 years of age, and this is what it looks like. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some tiny, tiny, a tiny handful of somewhat competent panels. But due to everything else just being so bad, I'm convinced they're either traced in some way or just straight up a fluke on Chris's part. I mean, the colors don't even stay in the lines, for God's sake. Look at, look, you see this little background thing? I've been using this whole video. Look at this. I'm gonna unblur it. Look how bad this is. Like, like, oh my god, I'm just- Whilst in the future there are some tiny improvements, it's still pretty bad. I give it a 2 out of 10, because that's probably the year in school kids that could draw this would be. Not to mention how scary some of these drawings are. Look at this, look! Oh, I do love Bionic the Hedgehog though, he is cool, man, he is cool. <clears throat> Alright, recommendation term. Honestly, this feels like punching down because of how blatantly bad this comic is. I can't recommend it at all. It will have a deep mental toll on you, my beloved viewer. Even now, I can still feel the mental scarring this book has left on me. The whole thing starts as a poorly written fanfic. You fucked up my face. And towards the end, becomes a really weird power fantasy. Featuring frequent talks of Hedgehog Sack, creepy fantasizing about women who had no interest in him, murder fantasies, as well as a story and dialogue that is simply baffling. I see no reason to recommend this to anyone, not even in a so bad it's good way. What? I, I will say, this comic does as one use as a torture method for the CIA, alright? Because this, this is awful. But, 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 there is one saving grace to this, this garbage fire. 
It's Bionic the Hedgehog, baby. It's Bionic the Hedgehog. We love it. Something I did want to note. A little thing called Aspichu. It's a parody some guy made of the Sonic Shoe comics. Better art style. It's a very interesting piece. I'd recommend you look into it. I think it's kind of like a connected universe to Sonic Shoe. They've referenced each other a lot. And uh, Aspichu uses a lot of Sonic Shoe's characters. But like parody versions of them. I'll warn you now though, Aspichu doesn't have an ending. It is very dark humor. Like... Be prepared, you will see some weird stuff. Chris and the comet maker even ended up feuding a ton of times. Those images from earlier where Chris kills people, yeah, that's the Aspichu Alpha dude. So class, what have we learned today? Huh? I'll tell you, orange hedgehogs are cool as hell. Uh, don't read Sonichu, and you should subscribe to me for putting myself through this and uh, saving you the time and energy for reading this awful comment. If you wanna look into this more, I'd recommend Gina Samuel 1 series on Chris Chan's life. It's incredibly in depth and it's shocking how weird this person's life was. And seeing how he lived it, seeing how she lived it, helps you understand what's going on and why he made, why they made such odd decisions in making that comic. Other than that, folks, that's it. Don't read Sonichu. Forget of everything about it. Erase it from your mind. Sub to me. I beg of you, please. And I'll never cover this again. Ever. I don't care. Watch my actually good video, okay? You better- <laughs>